Hey friends, Jennifer Donnelly, the queen of Section 8 with Section 8 Educate here. Today I'm going to be telling you a little bit more about part of my tenant screening process, specifically as it relates to the documents that I get from my tenants, my Section 8 tenants. And I'm going to spend my time talking about um, the voucher, which is the document that is really different than what you would collect from a market tenant. But before I do that, first of all, see my new AirPods? Aren't you so jelly if you don't already have them? I got some of the new uh, AirPod Pros for uh, Christmas and I'm so excited. The, um, they sound great. They work great. Hopefully the audio is a little bit better too for you on the video. Um, and the other thing I wanted to tell you about was it is New Year's Eve, but I'm still out running around today a little bit because I love what I do. And I just approved a tenant for our last vacant property. So hooray. But here, um, two cool things about that. So first of all, I did this. So the way I, my tenant screening process works is very lengthy. And the very last piece is a home visit. So I go to the property that they're currently living at to verify that they have taken what we call reasonable and normal care of their current residence. Because basically we want to see how are they going to take care of our property. So I had a home visit this morning and the home was in good shape, meets our standard. So I let the, the applicant know that great news, we're gonna be able to approve you. And you guys, she started to cry. She, she literally put her head in her hands and shook because she was so happy. And so that was just such a cool way to kind of close out my year. She's been living with her mom with her couple of kiddos for several years. I think that they are all ready for her to have her own space. It's a really nice property. It's around the corner um, from some family as well. So that was just really, really neat to see and be a part of and to, to be able to give her that and, and, and let her know that right here at the end of the year. The other thing that's great about that from a more selfish standpoint is like I said, that is my last vacant property. So we have been through a little period here for the last several months we've had more vacant property than I would like. Several things kind of played into that. Uh, we've had several really big rehabs on a couple of new purchases as well as on a couple of properties that I bought, tenant occupied, that we knew would need some rehab once they became vacant and it all sort of happened at the same time. Plus a couple of other smaller rehabs in the mix as well and some new purchases. Um, so it's just been, it's been pretty taxing on my team in particular as we're really rushing to get everything done so we can get these properties occupied. I hate having vacant property. It's such a cash flow killer. So it's New Year's Eve, like I said. So at this point, mid to late January, we should be fully occupied. The cash will be coming in and everything will get caught up. So if you are in that space, just know while this is a great business, it ain't all sunshine and rainbows. If you've been in the business very long, you know that. And I'm looking forward to when we don't have any more vacant properties, which should be really soon. But let's talk tenant screening and specifically the housing voucher. So documentation that I collect whenever I have somebody apply for one of my properties. The first, of course, is I do require them to send in proof of income, just like you would for a market tenant. So that's gonna be, you know, last three pay stubs, offer letter, award letter, SSI letter, SSDI letter, something like that. You do that for a market tenant. I also collect their uh, a picture of their ID, which typically has already been taken care of through my show mojo screening, uh, I'm sorry, showing process. So. If you go back to one of my prior videos, I talk about our fully automated showing process. And part of that is that people have to send in a picture of their ID. So I should already have both of those things. And again, you would get those for market tenants. Here's where it gets different. So because these folks have qualified for a housing choice voucher or a section eight voucher, they have a copy of their voucher. And the voucher is a document that they get when they are eligible to start looking for a property. And it has several pieces of information on it that you would expect. Obviously it has their name. It also has which housing authority they are working through. So depending on where you are, you may only have one that you work with. Here in St. Louis, we have a city housing authority and we have a county housing authority. If you don't live here, we're one of those silly cities that splits the city and the county operations. And the same is true for um, our housing authorities. And so somebody can come to me, all of my properties are actually in St. Louis County, but they can come to me with a city voucher or a county voucher. It doesn't matter which office they are sort of, it's like home base for them. They can still rent one of my properties in the county. 
So I want to know which agency that they're through, which housing authority they're through, not because it affects whether they qualify or not, but it just tells me who I'm going to be working with and which process I'm going to be following. They are a little bit different from the two housing authorities. It lists their caseworker, which is really good information to have because that tells me who I need to send the documentation to if we do go ahead and move them forward in our process. And then it also tells me who I can contact if I have questions specific to this applicant along the way, which once in a while does pop up. Here in St. Louis, we're lucky both of our housing authorities list all their caseworkers with full contact information, phone and email on their website. So they're really easy to get a hold of. And at this point, most of them I have worked with at some point along the way. So they're already in my email and I have their contact information. So the two pieces of information that are on the voucher that are gonna affect whether they get through the screening process are one, the number of bedrooms that they're qualified for. So the voucher is going to say unit size and basically that means this is how many bedrooms this person is qualified for. And it's gonna be, of course, dependent on how big their family is. So if it, they just have one child, as long as they're over a year old, they're probably, they are only gonna have a two bedroom voucher. If they have two kids, three kids, sometimes four kids, depending on ages and sexes, you're gonna have maybe two, maybe three bedrooms. You might even have a four, kind of depending on how things are. are. And so you get the idea more people in the family, the more bedrooms that they qualify for, which of course makes sense. The reason that's important to me as a landlord is this, the number of bedrooms on their voucher is going to dictate, at least in part, how much in rent that person is going to get or be able to pay through section eight. So my rule is you have got to have on your voucher, the same number or more bedrooms as I have in my house. So for instance, I will not take a two bedroom voucher in a three bedroom house. And the reason for that is I run the very high risk of getting less in rent from someone with a two bedroom voucher than I would with a three because of the way the rents are calculated. And it makes sense, of course. So you would think um, that that would be a pretty simple thing. And most of the time it is, but of course we don't live in a perfect world. My, my showing system on the front end asked them some questions before they could even view the house. And one of those questions is, how many bedrooms is your voucher for? And if their voucher is not for the same number or more bedrooms as I have in my house, they shouldn't be able to go see the house. But sometimes they answer the question wrong something like that. So they get all the way through the process. I get the voucher and I say, oh, sorry, you have a two bedroom voucher. This is a three bedroom house per our process. You do not qualify. The other thing I hear sometimes from applicants when that comes up is they will say, well, my caseworker told me that I can still get a three bedroom house. That is true. They could, as long as the landlord will allow it. And this landlord is not allowing it. So I have to let them know that. The other thing that's on the voucher, which doesn't usually cause a problem, but I did have recently come up, is it tells you when their voucher expires. It tells you the day it was issued, and it tells you when their voucher expires. And they have to find a place and submit paperwork to the caseworker through the landlord before their voucher expires. And they typically will get one extension if they're not able to find a place in that period of time. That's been especially common through COVID. It seems like it's been more difficult for people to find houses. Little tip there, if you've heard me speak, one of the reasons I love Section 8 is that the demand is very high, supply is very low. And one more thing that sort of cements that for me is the number of people I see who are having to get their voucher extended so that they don't run out of time. So like I said, that's not typically an issue, but it is something I always check. And I recently got a voucher from an applicant that showed it was expired. I thought, well, you know, she probably just sent me the old one. She probably got it extended, no big deal. But I'm gonna go ahead and send an email to the caseworker listed on the voucher just to verify. Sent the caseworker an email. I said, hey, this person has applied to rent one of our properties. The voucher she sent me has expired. I'm just emailing to verify that it is still valid. It was not valid. It had expired. And the caseworker said, no, she just signed a new lease in September. She can't look for a new place until next. She can't get into a new place until next September. How weird is that? Here's the really crazy part. I let the applicant know, sorry, your voucher's expired and your caseworker confirmed that. And she wanted to fight about it. She was trying to tell me that her caseworker was wrong and that she had the wrong person and on and on. So I actually double checked with the caseworker. No, the voucher was expired. So I just moved on. 
So that did two things, of course. I didn't waste any time verifying and screening this person, calling prior landlords, all that good stuff. That would have been an interesting phone call to our current landlord. But also, it probably maybe saved me like kind of a crazy person that I might have been dealing with. Um, so this is the big thing on the voucher. Just make sure the bedrooms match and it's still valid. Otherwise, I'm not moving forward. We don't pass go any of that stuff on the screening until we know at least that the voucher is valid and, and suits our processes. I will put a link in the comments to this video to my website where I've got an example of a voucher so you can see what they look like. I suspect they're gonna be pretty much the same across the country. The two agencies that we deal with, they look very similar. The information is the same. They just, you know, they're just a little bit different. And so it's gonna be probably the same for you as well. I think that's it for me today. As always, if this is helpful to you, please like, subscribe, follow. Also comment, let me know, is this, is this content useful for you? Do you have questions? Um, if you're screening Section 8 tenants, do you have other documentation that you collect that I haven't mentioned, especially stuff that's different? than market tenants, please let me know. Hope you guys have a great new year and I will see you next time.